And we now offer the floor to the delegation of St. Lucia. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning for those who are here in person. We want to say good afternoon and good evening for those joining us virtually. We want to first and foremost welcome our new chairperson in the person of Mr. Marcello Cosillas, Dr. Cosillas, and we look forward to working with him. We want to thank the outgoing presiding officers and we look forward to the new ones coming and to resolve that St. Lucia will work together to ensure the ideals of the Escazo Agreement are achieved. I want to recognize with me my permanent secretary in the person of Mrs. Anita Montut, who heads our delegation, and to bring you warm greetings from the government and people of St. Lucia, and in particular our department, the Department of Sustainable Development, which is headed by our minister, the Honorable Sean Edward. Mr. Chairman, at the national level, we have done a lot of things. I am so ecstatic to report that our cabinet of ministers have now approved and adopted our concept note. And what is our concept note? The blueprint for implementation for the Escazoo Agreement in St. Lucia. And so that concept note has all the things that we are required to do for the free tiers of the Escazoo Agreement, access to information, the establishment of the national environmental information systems, which we have already done. We are now ready to feed into that with our adaptation plans, our state of the environment reports, and we have already started reaching now to the different agencies to feed into that information. You'd recall last year and the years before, we had a very robust and successful public awareness campaign. Uh, we had health capacity building initiatives in collaboration with the Escazo Secretariat to meet with the judiciary, very well attended, the uh, Bar Association, as well as our National Workers Union. So we will continue with that, meeting with the other stakeholders, but now with an implementation focus. Mr. Chairman, in terms of legislation, we are now reviewing our Freedom of Information Bill, which has been around, but we are ensuring now that it has explicit provisions to deal with access rights. We are now looking at the legislation that is already in place, like our physical planning laws, our environmental laws, uh, to see that we have very express provisions. We have also made a representation to our minister in terms of constitutional reform to ensure that we have access rights very prominent in our constitution. And so, Mr. Chairman, we have also moved from a national level and we at a regional level have teamed up with Antigua and Barbuda. You know, they've been very instrumental with us, working with us and to raise public awareness across the region. And as mandated by articles 10 and 11 of the Escazoo Agreement, capacity building and inter-island cooperation 11.4, we have reached out to Dominica and Grenada. So just last week, Ruth Spencer and myself came back from Antigua and Barbuda to head, head in a mission where we will assist in Dominica and Grenada in mobilizing efforts towards ratification. Because both Dominica and Grenada, whilst they have been very instrumental in the negotiations, have not yet ratified. So we want to thank Mr. Chamberlain Emmanuel, who's right here with us, because when I approached him for assistance to head that, to go into that mission, he was very, very receptive. He put us on to his, his colleagues, Mrs. Joan John Novel and her biospace project, which gave us the financial assistance to go into, Domini into Grenada to assist them. At the regional and global level, we, and again with the, um, in partnership with Antigua and Barbuda, Ms. Spencer and myself, we have been asked to serve as mentors to a number of regional fora. We were asked to share our experiences at the conference on the status of women, CSW 66, which just ended, sharing on Escazo agreement. We also were asked to share experiences on the forum on sustainable for countries of Latin America and Caribbean, uh, which was recently held in Costa Rica, a side event on that on SDG 14. We were also asked to 
to assist in that. So St. Lucia has been called, together with Antigua, have been called upon both the regional and international level to assist in, in, in mobilizing. And that mission that I spoke to about uh, Grenada and uh, Dominica, the other islands like um, uh, Belize have also tried to partner with us in Trinidad and Tobago, and I think even Bahamas will be uh, partnering with us in terms of moving towards uh, ratification efforts. And so we have secured the assistance of an, the Open Foundation, Mr. Oro Fraser, has agreed to, has asked us to submit proposals for assistance to help us in that quest. And Mr. Fraser has also given his commitment to assist us with our, with our continued robust public awareness campaign and capacity building in St. Lucia, where we'll be doing some billboards, some facial masks. We are going back into the schools and in, into, the, into the communities, the local communities, working with the identifying the areas that we need help and to show how the ESCASU agreement can affect the people on the ground. So these are the sorts of things that we are doing. Mr. Chairman, we want to, we want to say that we are very pleased to work with the indigenous peoples and the representatives of the public and so we, we, we um, welcome the, the proposal to have an annual forum for discussion. And so we will be, we'll be meeting with them as well as contributing towards that action plan that they have identified in the document. In fact, I think during the course of this, we'll be meeting with Koika and some of the other representatives for indigenous and human rights persons so that we can, St. Lucia can see how we can further expand our assistance to them. So we want to thank, because St. Lucia also worked together with Panama, Uruguay, and Costa Rica in, in the working group for compliance and implementation, which is a very important committee. And we hope that today, during the course of this week, that we will get your approval for the rules. We want to thank Mr. Mr. Roberto Cespedes, Mr. Marco Soriano, who all assisted in the early stages of putting those, those rules together. And I think we have achieved a version of the rules that has enough flexibility to allow the committee to do its work, yet is very reflective of the ideals and aspirations of the people of our region, as well as the provisions of the ESCOZO agreement. So, Mr. Chairman, I want, to I want to stop here and to thank all those who have worked behind the scenes. I want to thank ECLAC. Uh, Carlos de Miguel, Ms. Alonso, Mr. David Barrio, Namash, Mr. Jose Luis Samaniego, who has agreed because today we did the course, I think it's tomorrow, we are hosting a side event with a very high powered panel. So I hope you will all register and participate and ask us questions. So, um, we are also partnering, partnering with Ms. An the UNDP, Mrs. Andrea Brusco and her team uh, during the the noon hour from 1 to 2.30 p.m. So I hope you'll also join that as well. We also want to thank uh, Ms. Yvonne Good from the UNDP who has showcased all of St. Lucia's work on, on the website in terms of all what we've done in terms of public awareness. So we want to really, really thank them for giving us that platform and for continuing to support the efforts towards implementation. So again, we want to thank all of you have, who have helped us along the way. Ms. Spencer, I cannot see how, I cannot continue to tell you how much of your, uh, uh, a blessing you have been to St. Lucia in terms of our partnership. So thank, again, thank you again, Mr. Chairman, and we will resolve to continue to work towards achieving the ideals of the Escazo Agreement, as well as the people of our region. Thank you. Gracias, Santa Lucía. Thank you, Saint Lucia.